A genetically modified organism or GMO is any organism whose genetic material has been altered using genetic engineering techniques. GMOs are the source of medicines and genetically modified foods and are widely used in scientific research to produce other goods. The term GMO is very close to the technical legal term living modified organism, defined in the Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety, which regulates international trade in living GMOs. Modern recombinant DNA technology enables the stitching together of pieces of DNA. Since the 1980s, this technology has been used extensively in the lab by researchers for countless purposes. To make copies of genes or proteins, to determine gene function, to study gene expression patterns, and to create models for human disease. One application has been to generate food crops that are modified in a way that is advantageous to either the producer or the consumer. Currently, the GM crops on the market have bacterial genes introduced into their genomes that encode for pest or herbicide resistance. In theory, this should cut down on the amount of chemicals a farmer needs to spray, but in practice, that goal has not been realized as pests and weeds become resistant to the chemicals being used. Most scientists agree that GM foods are safe. However, there is concern among them. The vocal resistance of certain individuals to GMOs which is due in part to a lack of understanding of the technology and the prevalence of misinformation. Man has been genetically modifying food crops through selective breeding since we moved from hunting and gathering to agriculture over 10,000 years ago. Modern technology just speeds up the process. GM crops have been planted extensively for a little over a decade. While no negative health consequences have been detected or are anticipated, the relative newness of GM crops require that we continue to monitor for health impacts. We asked some students and an instructor in the campus about their knowledge and understanding, as well as their opinions in stand on GMOs and GM foods. Do you have an idea what GM foods are? Yes. Uh, do you have any idea what genetically modified foods are? I think so. <laughs> Um, do, you know, do you have any idea what genetically modified foods are? Um, actually, meron ko, pero hindi ko alam kung tama. Uh, what do you know about them? Can you describe? Uh, yung Indian foods, I think sila yung, yung ginagamit na alternative para dun sa mga ano, crops na hindi in season. Well, yung mga genetically modified crops, for example. So, ina-alter yung mga genes ng mga crops or organisms, for example, to make it, like, if you want to make it temperature resistant, or there are some crops na pwede mong lagyan ng nutrients, like beta-carotene or vitamin A or amina, para may additional nutrient value yung crops. So, yun, yun yung intindi ko sa crops. Ang alam ko dun, it's about, uh, um, genetics ng um, certain food na pinagsasama. What is your stand on GM foods? Are you pro or anti? Um, there are pros and cons. You pros, um, technically there are some crops kasi na nagiging insect repellent. Parang resistant siya sa mga insects. Mga genetically modified na siya. And then, as I said earlier, so alibawa, may mga areas na masyadong uh, matas yung temperature, so pwede na gawin temperature resistant, or yung may mga soil na magtaas ang salinity, so pwede rin na gawin uh, parang maging tolerant dun sa saline soil na yun. So, in that aspect, advantage siya. No? But in terms of yung disadvantage, I think kailan kasi ng thorough study. O yung disadvantage were more on. If you're going to think about an object na inalter yung genes and DNA, then you're going to intake it. Medyo syempre madaming nagatak. So kailan tayo ganang thorough study. Siguro for me, I'm anti. Kasi parang sa mga based on researches, parang nabasa ko kasi na may mga binabato na sila na possible na side effects ng mga GMOs. Although, hindi naman lahat yun napatunayan na nila. Pero still, hindi pa tayo sure kung totally safe siya. Um, sa tingin ko po, Kuya, ano, 
okay lang pong magkaroon ng mga genetically modified okay. kasi kung for the better naman po bakit po hindi natin itrap na yun tama paano maapektuhan yung GM food sa ating buhay? Um, paano makaka-apekto? Uh, sa tingin ko kung dahil nga sa GMO foods magkakaroon ng more produced crops sa ating bansa at ibig sabihin na magiging dependent na tayo so lalakas yung pwedeng tumaas ng ekonomiya at magkaroon ng dagdag trabaho sa iba. Kulang na labor, eh kung matutugunan naman ng GMO foods, uh, eh di okay na po na maging pro doon. Siguro makaka-apekto siya sa akin in a way na kapag, yun nga, pag hindi in season yung, yung gusto ko na ano na crop, tapos andyan yung mga GM foods para yun yung alternative na pwede kong gamitin or kainin. Economically, Siguro advantage siya kasi it could multiply the amount of crops and then it could also shorten the time ng pag-harvest. So economically speaking, advantage siya in terms of yung supply, yung supply and demand. So madaming kumaga mabibigyan niya lahat if i-apply yun. So, I think on that aspect, advantage siya. So last na to guys. Can you describe GM foods in one word? Wow. Amazing. <laughs> Healthy. Innovative. <laughs> we have heard about the certain variety of rice genetically engineered with beta carotene intended to be grown in areas with vitamin A shortage, also called as the golden rice. To have a much better understanding on the crop, as well as GMOs, we went to pay a visit to Erie in Los Banos, Laguna attended the lecture and conducted an interview with Dr. Violeta Villegas, a senior scientist and the Golden Rice Network coordinator in Erie. So in industry, <clears throat> if you ate cheese, chymosine, an enzyme used in cheese manufacturing, used to be harvested from animals. Now, cheese, chymosine is produced by biotech, so it's cheaper. And 80 or 90 percent of global Chymosine is produced by biotech, so I can afford to buy cheese. Otherwise, only the rich could have afforded the cheese. Biofuel, here in, in Asia, our base for biofuel is sugarcane, but in the US, the base is corn. A company produced corn amylase that has built-in enzyme for alcohol production. No external amylase is needed. They just have to mix, I don't know the percentage, maybe 10, 10% 10 of corn amylase into regular corn and that's enough to produce alcohol from that batch. An assessment by Tamper and Kame in 2014, they concluded that GM adoption has reduced chemical pesticide by 37%, yield increased by 22%, and farmer profits by 68%. So I have here the ordinary rice, same variety, where we added, where the beta carotene genes are. Here is the golden rice. So this is the science behind golden rice. Phytoinsynthase from maize, from corn, and phytoinsaturates from a common soil bacteria were added into rice, ordinary rice. And these two genes enable the rice to produce beta carotene in the grain, the grain that we eat. They say that rice produces a very minuscule amount of beta carotene in the leaves. Minuscule in the leaves, but we don't eat the leaves. We need this nutrient in the grain. And this was made possible only through modern biotech, through genetic engineering. Because these organisms will not cross with rice. So we say golden rice is a potential new food-based approach to solve vitamin A deficiency. Why potential? Because it's not approved yet. It's not in the market yet. So we say potential. We have to prove that it will be useful. Why is vitamin A important? When you are VAD, vitamin A deficient, you become more susceptible, your immune system is compromised. You become 
more susceptible to certain diseases like measles or whatever. And children are mostly affected. Their eyesight is affected. They may become blind, they may die because they are more susceptible to diseases. And in our region, in Asia, 90 million children in Southeast Asia are vitamin A deficient. Also pregnant women, because pregnant women, lactating women, they, they provide nourishment to the baby. There are interventions, and these are working. These are working interventions, like you diversify your diet, eat more fruits and vegetables, optimum infant and young child feeding practices like breastfeeding. About half a year ago, the Supreme Court of the Philippines made a decision to permanently ban GM eggplant crop trials and temporarily ban other GMO crop trials. These are the reactions of some UPLB students. Hi. Hi. Uh, what do you GMO? Why is it like that? I just want to make it easy. It's a good thing, of course. Ang pinaka ano, bakit 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 po ganun bakit kaya na naging desisyon natin ng SC bakit po humantong sa desisyon na itigil yung pag uh, improve ng ating technology ng ating science when in fact ang gusto lamang po ng ating UPLB scientists ng ating science community ay mapaunlad po yung ating pamumuhay may forever may forever pala Kahit po ako yung nakangiti, ako po yung nalulungkot sa desisyon po ng korte eh. kasi posible rin po na matigil po or mabawasan yung grants po sa pagpapatuloy po ng mga thesis po namin. Siguro po parang nainggit lang sila sa ibang countries. Given po na hindi po kami makakagalaw ngayon, hindi po kami makakapaggawa ng mga research, yung course po namin, wala po siyang maibibigang, maibibigay na maganda Higit po sa Pilipinas, wala siyang maibibigay ng magandang produkto sa mga farmers dahil para po kaming napilayan, para po kaming tananggalan ng kamay at ng paa sa pagtanggal po ng desisyon na po. Mismo pong scientist natin yung nag-develop po na mismo galing sa UPLB as in Institute of Plant Breeding po natin yung nag-develop tapos mas pinili pa nilang maniwala sa hindi naman po trained sa science. Technically, the researches and the... the the projects were stopped and students uh, were not uh, will not graduate on time if worst case scenario will uh, push through tuloy na wala na ako nang gana kasi yung lola ko na nagpaaral sa akin doon isa sa pangarap namin na magnegosyo balang araw doon na magagamit ko yung course ko para matulungan ko siya na makapagnegosyo sa probinsya namin parang sobrang nadismaya po ako kasi hindi pa po ako graduating ngayon and knowing na naput to stop yung lahat ng researches and other studies regarding genetically modified organisms and the, also the use of modern biotechnology. Nakakalungkot lang po na hindi ko alam kung saan ako papatungo after this. Kung hindi man po maaprobahan yung bago na pinaplano na joint, um, joint department circular, paano na lang po kaming mga estudyante? Ano, ano pa po yung future namin? Paano kami gagraduate? We even asked Dr. Villegas about the situation. Yes. Why did SC again ban the research related in BT eggplant? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they didn't. I don't know. I don't know. I... Maybe they didn't have enough science background. <laughs> After learning a lot more about GMOs, the impacts, advantages and disadvantages, as well as the issues and concerns about them, we decided to share and talk within the group our opinions about them. We've been doing primitive genetic modification for many centuries such as crossbreeding and selective breeding. Some of the fruits and vegetables we eat every day wouldn't exist without primitive genetic modification techniques. Without human involvement and careful plant breeding, we wouldn't have broccolis. Among many other fruits and vegetables that wouldn't exist without human ingenuity and experimentation. GMOs allow us to make more food. We can produce more crops that allow us to feed more people. It allows plants to reproduce more, grow in harsher conditions, 
and survive past and it's not different from what we've been doing for our entire existence. We've been selectively breeding and modifying plants for the entire time we've had domestication practices. All plants we eat are GMOs. There is no difference between that and doing it more directly through genetic manipulation. Now that we have access to biotechnology, it is really just a part of the evolution of the human race to experiment with that. It could end badly, but so could the great experiment of civilization itself. We think that we have to always try new things and experiment as we believe life itself is just an experiment. And this is how life evolves. Should we hide away in our caves out of fear of something going wrong? Science cannot declare any technology completely risk-free. But we can deny the fact that GMO crops can reduce some environmental risk associated with conventional agriculture and that they are even better at feeding us than before. Genetically modified foods have the potential to solve many of the world's hunger and malnutrition problems and to help protect and preserve the environment by increasing yield and reducing reliance upon chemical pesticides and herbicides. Yet, there are many challenges ahead for governments especially in the areas of safety testing, regulation, international policy, and food labeling. Many people feel that genetic engineering is an inevitable wave of the future, and that we cannot afford to ignore a technology that has such an enormous potential benefits. However, we must proceed with caution to avoid causing unintended harm to human health and the environment as a result of our enthusiasm for this powerful technology.